Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In today's channel I'm going to introduce you here the retro computer programming world which was uh, in old days very popular in my childhood obviously I had uh, the Amstrad uh, CPC 464 computer. It was a cassette computer. It was a music cassette computer. It was a magnetic tape and I had to wait a bit or several minutes to load a game, a single game and obviously it was a very uh, old computer but it, the graphics were amazed we have this uh, 64 kilobyte version of this this is the uh, 128 kilobyte computer basic 1.1 this is the Amstrad CPC 6128 version but as I told you I had the uh, previous version the cassette version which uh, this is the excuse me this is the disk model we had the uh, three inches this model and as you can see the memory the total capacity of this computer is not even a single uh, photograph modern world photograph JPG pro photograph or MPNG photograph not a single that it was a tiny small piece of photograph <laughs> this the whole memory of this computer we have very limited spaces to do something with this the graphics were very ah not good but we had a lot of fun we were not searching too much qualified from these computers we were playing a lot of hours especially in christmas days we were playing the whole day and the whole night until the morning times and as i told you i was a child i was playing games i had very fun but the time passes i was start to think about how these made the games were made okay and i start to search about the uh informations from internet in 1985 i'm just choking we don't have any internet connection in the uh, 80s i just start to uh, think about how can i write the codes and create the similar or not the same games and have fun with it I start to make my research in my neighborhood we have a small uh, store which selling retro computer games cassette games and all these games from uh, for all PCs then I go to the store and I uh, saw this amazing book which had every single programming example for Amstrad CPC computers and I grab one I bought it I came home and start searching and examine it and I see that we have lines of uh, programming very many lines thousands of lines to do a single game and I start to mimic the the book to computer and I learned many things from it by the way I didn't have this uh, color version of this I had the green screen which was completely uh, green I don't know if I can show it here display mode can we have the display mode color okay monochrome okay my computer was like this wow. I will make my display uh, the entire screen full screen okay my display was like this totally green no color nothing to examine I was doing like pen uh, 4 to change my font color pen 3 pen 1 pen 0 to do what we can do for this pen 0 nothing pen 7 okay it was like this but nothing to see let me go out of uh, full screen I want to display it in color mode. Where is it? Okay. Thank you. Let's see what else color we have. Pen 9. Pen 1. Pen 2. Uh, the turquoise. Pen 3. It was like this. It should be single. Pen 3. It is red once again. Pen 4. Pen 5, 
pen 9, pen 11. What we have here? The red one? Okay, I don't know. CLS? It was like this, okay? It was a similar. Uh, let's do it. Pen 3. Uh, pen 4. How can I restore to my yellowish uh, font color? Okay. CLS. Also, we had the uh, modes, font size characters to make it with mode 0. It was the biggest font size, as you can see. With mode 1 is the regular font size. And with mode 2, we had the tiny font size, the smallest one. Nice, right? Okay, not big deal. But also we had the uh, border coloring style. We, when we are doing the border 0, we had the black uh, frame color. When I was doing the border, border 1, we have the uh, equal color with uh, our panel, border 2, we have the turquoise, border oops, 3, we have the reddish color, and etc. Okay, then let me clear the screen with CLS. Then I start to uh, realize how can we write the codes inside uh, the program and make it run, right? So, in order to write a program, in that case, we had to make a line. Line number one, okay? We say clear screen. In line two, we say print, okay? Hello world. close it and then we say in order to start the program we had to type run command and press enter you see clear the screen and then say hello world to me after that in order to edit a line and uh, make some changes some updates to the program let me do the list again and see what we have inside the program we had to, to say the command edit and the line we want to update, we decide to update. I want to update the line 1 and instead of clear screen I want to say mode 1. Okay, press enter, clear the screen and make list once again and see if we have updated the line 1. Yes, you can see now instead of clear screen it says mode 1. Say run. Okay. Regular font sizes. And we say run one. Okay. M make it full screen again. It's better. Now, how can I get rid of uh, my uh, program from the memory? I s just type the uh, command delete and press enter. I just get rid of my program from the memory of the computer and when I type the command list you see I don't own the program anymore now how can I uh, input some data and display it into the screen get the user's input and display it to the screen okay let's create a, a short program for this line 10 we can uh, go 10 by 10 or 20, uh, how you want, 20, 20, 10, 10, 10, 10, or uh, 100, 100. It depends on you. I will start with uh, line 10. I will say mode 1. With line 20, I will say, uh, I will make an input. And in order to uh, insert this uh, text, I have to do the... Uh, double quotic and I'll say uh, what is your name what is your name okay Oops, sorry what's your name in order to get the uh, value from this input I will say comma I will do a variable of a and in order to get the string 
from this input, I have to put the dollar sign, okay? Like that. In line 30, well, there, is, there are two ways to uh, write the command to print. When you put the question mark once, it uh, automatically turns to print, and then in the classic way, you can write print command, okay? Print, okay? I'll do one of this, and then for the continue, I want to continue in same line. I would uh, put the uh, double dots and co continue with uh, the same line. I will put for now the question mark, which automatically will return to command print. And here I'm going to say something to the user. Hello. And here I want to get the uh, input value. Okay. Let's run the program. Please enter your name. And I will say here, uh, Joe. Joe, okay. I want, ah, Joe. Hello, Joe. Thank you. Hello, Jones. Okay, run once again. I will put a number, number five. Oh, my key is out of control. I'll put the five. It returns to the string. Not a big deal, right? Okay. Let's change now the variable kind of this uh, program. I will edit again the line 20. And instead of dollar sign, I will delete it and I'll leave only the variable A. Okay. Run. Once again, now I put the number, the same integer, but I cannot display it to the screen. Why? Because also, when I change one value and uh, return it to integer from a string, in order to display it to the screen, I have to also edit the program line 30 and make this variable to integer. Okay? Run once again, put 5, now we display the integer values inside our print command. Run once again, uh, when I try to type something like uh, J, you see, we get an error. You cannot put, you cannot put string values inside our integer values. Okay, you can only specify integer values inside our integer variables. And when we not put anything, it says hello zero. Now delete the program once again. Delete it. And make a short calculator. I will make an input from the beginning and I will uh, uh, ask the uh, user how many numbers you want to get in calculate in order to get the sum of them. So I say click screen. In line 20, I put my uh, input and ask the user how many numbers you want to get sum. I'll put the integer variable here, A, okay. In line 30, in order to make a for loop on that space, we were writing for uh, C equals one, our for loop will begin to from one, and it will go until, <coughs> sorry, until the value we put from the input until the A. And here in line 40, I will say, uh, how can we say, print. Mm. 
Uh, how can I print it here? I want to use the... Uh, print C value. Or value number... Okay. I'll do the opposite. Value number... I'll get the C, and then here I will get the input. Or can I get it uh, directly from my... Uh no, I can also do it directly. Okay, okay. input. Uh, what can I say? Uh, B, input B, okay, then in line 50, I'll make a sum variable, and it will equal the previous value of sum, and it will uh, get the plus sign, I will add it above to my previous sum variable, B, and I will equal it to the new I will update the sum value of my previous with the, the new one added. And in order to close the loop, we have to say next. And it will return all the time inside the loop. And in line 70, I will say print result, the result, result is Okay, I want the result and get the sum. Sum, not sum. Let's run and see if we're gonna get any back. How many numbers you wanna calculate? Two numbers. Value number one, it's 10. Value number two is 30. The result is 40, you see? Okay, nice. Run once again. And make it uh, 3, 20, 80, 10. The result is 110. Let's run the program once again and see what's happened if I put 0. The result is 0. But I don't want to... Uh, give any result when I put the value 0 or 1 because there is no any meaning, right? There is no, not, not make any sense to uh, try to calculate 0 numbers of numbers and 1 because if I put 1, it will be only 10 and the result will be 10 no any meaning that's why I'm gonna put an if statement there somewhere in between in line 25 I will create a statement and I will say if a is less or equal to 1 then in order to go back to my previous line we have to put the then phrase in if statement and say go to 20 right let's run once again how many numbers you want to uh, get some? Zero, you see. When I put one, also go back. When I put two, now we calculate, okay? Now we talk. Okay. Thanks for watching me. It was uh, only just a beginning for, for retro computing. If you like this series, please give a big thumbs up and uh, please make a comment inside my... Uh, comment section in order to see if you want to see more of this series i will be very appreciated for this thanks for watching me once again and i will see you in the next episode don't forget to subscribe to my channel like this video okay obviously i'm a new channel and i need more audience and i will see you maybe in this retro computing world once again who knows with a game i don't know 
If you like it, it depends on you. I will try to make more videos of this. Until then, have a nice day, be safe, and see you soon. Bye-bye.